Welcome to Art Appreciation. For the next five weeks, we will study the creative arts of human expression. First, let's start by defining art. The dictionary definition defines it as the quality, production, expression, or realm according to the aesthetic principles of what is beautiful, appealing, or more than ordinary significance. But art is subjective. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. To find art is not always easy. Um, first, we have to learn to analyze a piece before we respond. Don't think too quickly, but take a moment to see the art's full potential before you actually form an opinion. Second, accept emotions as part of the evaluation. It's okay if an art piece makes you angry, sad, happy, or even disgusted. Good art should make you feel something. That's its intent. Third, Look beyond your eyes to what the artist might have been trying to say. Beyond the canvas and ask yourself, why might they have painted this particular painting or created this specific sculpture in the first place? What might they have been feeling when they did it? What do they want the viewer to take away? And lastly, remember that art isn't science. It's art. Every opinion is the right one. Next, let's just look at art and say, is this art? The little one in the left corner, it looks like it could have been done by a child. The one up in the far right corner doesn't look like it took too much skill. And the one below it is very creative. But the question must ask, is this art? How about these? How would you define art? In your opinion, what does an object have to have in order to be considered art? It's important that you begin to ponder this as it will determine your perspective in this course later on. See, art is really about what you find appealing. And the question to ask yourself is, if I don't find it appealing, is it art or is it just not good art? So let's take a second and see what Tolstoy said about art. He said it had to communicate concepts of morality, that it can't be defined as an activity. A means of communication it had had to make you feel something. Shouldn't appeal to just one society, but should appeal to all societies. It should be intelligible, comprehensible, and sincere. The highest being the religious perception. In other words, good art must be religious. What do you think? So if that's true, is this art? It wouldn't be good art according to Tolstoy, but is it to you? This painting was actually done by a cubist um, named Brock, a famous painter who many really feel is a great artist. But what do you think? Art has changed over the centuries. Just discussing the historical change of art could easily take three to four months just to touch the surface. But for right now, what we're going to do is take a quick look at traditional versus modern art. With the rise of transportation in the Industrial Revolution, automobiles, automobiles, airplanes, spacecraft, machines, technology, it all just blossomed and the world's perspective became infinite and unpredictable. This filtered over even into the humanities and brought about what we call modern art. And what is modern art? Basically, it's a break from tradition, a new outlook on life. The artists expressed what they felt inside rather than examining, examining only what they could see. But to completely understand, we kind of need to look first at traditional art. Traditional art, it was different. Traditional artists separated themselves from the piece. The focal point was clear and the most important thing in a painting. It was static, fixed, predictable, measurable, and realistic. The object was something you could see tangibly with the eye and therefore it had to be realistic. Modern art, on the other hand, was more about the artist than the painting itself. It was from the mind's eye, often abstract, often surreal. The modern artist expressed what they felt inside rather than examining only what they could see. In the past, art had a determined focal point, but modern art saw the canvas as a whole unit, making the viewer's eyes travel around the whole piece. When you look at Matisse's painting, The Dinner Table, what do you see? Notice how your eye travels around the painting and that the colors and the shapes aren't realistic and the entire canvas is used. 
If this had been a traditional painting, most likely the fruit bowl in the middle would be your focal point and it would be much larger than the rest of the piece. When I take this particular painting into a live classroom and I ask them, where's your eye drawn? I get all sorts of answers. The woman, the, the window, the chair. It's because there is no determined focal point and the answers are going to vary. Now look at Da Vinci's The Last Supper. Where's your focus? Your eye is obviously drawn to Jesus Christ. This is supposed to be the focus. Traditional artists determined where your eye would go and it was the most important aspect of the painting. The second would be that it was realistic. Here's a classic fruit bowl painted by David de Heem. The lighting of the painting draws your eye to the center fruit and everything in the painting points to that focal point. You have to really work to pull your eye away to take in the rest of the painting. And of course, the picture is realistic and believable. Almost makes me hungry. <laughs> in contrast, look at a bowl of fruit by Brock. Notice the surreal quality to the painting, how your eye is drawn around the piece without a fixed focal point, how the artist used the entire canvas so that you would take it all in. When you look at this landscape, what do you see? Where's your focal point? Can you see the techniques already discussed? Where's your eye drawn? Is it realistic? Do they use the entire canvas to tell the story? Yes, this is modern art done by Van Gogh. And it's a wheat field, but as you can see, it is not realistic in nature, and your eye does travel around the entire canvas. Here's another landscape. Now where's your eye drawn? to the waterfall, right? It is of course realistic in nature. This is a traditional painting done by the late David Johnson. Now, if this had been a more modern painting, less focal point on the um, actual waterfall, you might notice that there's a house in the far right corner. But you're not really meant to let your eye travel around like that. You have to step back from the painting to actually see the full force of what's going on. That is one of the major differences between modern and traditional. This week, the class will be discussing the red square in the discussion forum. There are people who question what makes a painting art. Look at this painting, the red square. Some of you would argue it's not art. But by definition, what do, who gets to decide that? What if art is merely the expression of creativity? Would this be art then, or would you say it's not creative? Is it simply in the eye of the beholder? you decide. My advice is don't answer too quickly. Follow the rules I set earlier in the lecture. Analyze before you respond. Accept emotions as part of the evaluation. See beyond your eyes and remember that art is in science. So as you ask, answer the question in the discussion forum about the red square, try to ask yourself what is really going on in this painting and what does it have to do with? Why might it have been painted? Accept that you may not like it and that's okay. But does that make it art or not art just because you don't like it? See beyond just what you're seeing. And remember, it's not going to be a science. There's no logic to it. It's just art. Be sure to know your material in this lesson before taking the quiz. A study guide has been provided in your syllabus to help you study. Have a great week. God bless.